Hi, it is Sandra back for another edition of Sandra Says. And this time, I had to bring one of my favorite people, my best friend, Yasmeen Mitchell. She's here. Um, we're color coordinated unintentionally because that's what happens when you're best friends for such a long time. You color coordinate without even talking to each other. So Yasmin, introduce yourself to the people. I'm Yasmin. Oh, thank you so much. Hey. Thank you. Like, our friendship has definitely evolved because yeah. we've done our teenage years, we've done our 20s, now we're in our 30s, looking looking good, looking great. Yeah, girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, of course, early in our friendship, we, well, we still sort of have it. Like, we used to be like, after a certain amount of days, if I don't hear from you, I'm going to come find you and find out why I ain't hear from you. I mean, we still have that to an extent. I mean, before it used to be a rigid three days three days I right think, the hell you do it as a teenager I'm, knock, I'm knocking on your door and i mean I still have, like i'll still be like wait a minute now what do i talk about cassandra oh, oh please so we still have it it's just not a rigid uh schedule right and i think that's important it's when you have a friendship you're supposed to be actively checking in on that person because I am one of those people that I get a little annoyed when people take memes as facts. I knew this was coming. I knew it was coming. You're about to talk about those people who, even though I haven't spoken to you in two years, doesn't mean I don't care. I knew you was going to... I knew you were going there. I knew, I knew it. Because if Yasmeen Mitchell does not... If I go two years, and I mean, so the reason why the reason why that does not apply here, one, because we're soulmates. Two, you're also the godmother of my children. You cannot go missing for two years when you when there are children involved. Like a lot <laughs> in two years, a lot happens in two weeks. So you can't really go missing. Right, it's just the strangest thing that I think. People are reinforcing bad behavior when they share memes like that and take it as seriousness. Like, as someone who does my best to be self-aware and talk to people, you know, therapist, you know, there are things that we sometimes gravitate towards that reinforces bad behavior. Yes, Yasmin is my bestest best friend. But even my friends who I see on occasion, I would never think, Oh, I haven't talked to them in six months. They should love me regardless. Yeah. What is this? I mean, Only God loves unconditionally, and I ain't God. That is true. Even my listen, my mama loved me too. I cannot tell my mama, girl, I ain't heard from you in two years and six months. You that is that is true too. And I think if you want to be that kind of person who doesn't think about show up or you know. Not even a happy birthday on Instagram, kind of friends. If you want to be that kind of person, you can be. But don't be surprised when the other person is like, yeah, no, I needed someone to be there every day. So Exactly. I'd, I'd actually not like to continue. <laughs> I'd right. actually like to cancel my subscription to this friendship, if you don't mind. So, exactly. I mean, like, I'm checking the no box on this friendship. And then that's when some of that bad behavior transfers to your romantic relationships. Because yeah. you're like, well... My friends don't need me to call them every day. Why well, I got to call you every day? You're checking in? Like, if you really miss and somebody, I'm, if you, like, even if you just like a person, you just, hey, how you doing? How was your day? Shoot them a text message. Shoot them a voice note. Voice note. Send okay, them a I mean, and that's, as somebody who likes to be alone, I don't like to hear other people talking. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, mm, mm. Like, I, I like it to be quiet all the time. I like to not hear people talk as much as possible. But if I could check in, if I can at least send you a text message or whatever, like, come on. Right. And so that's what I really want, like, as I continue in my new, my continuous chapter of life, whatever these 30s is, I mean, we in Corona times at that, it's like, Am I really being a good friend to people? Am I really checking in? Of course, I have my faults. I mean, there are a few friends of mine who will say, because sometimes yeah. we, we ain't perfect. I don't pro pro proclaim to be perfect. But trust me, it's sometimes my friends are like, Sandra, um, 
So you just completely forgot about this? We are in Corona times. Yes, ma'am. And you know, once again about the memes, how have you felt, I, you can, even for our friendship, we can use that as an example, how has this like being away from each other been for you? Because we do a, because you're married with kids, I'm single. So, you know, people, you know, we have different type of lives, but then it's like, we really got to be apart. So even when we would try to make time to be with each other, now it's like we really got a social distance. So how has it been for you trying to keep our, we have a pretty close friendship <laughs> in social distance. No, we really do. And it's, I, I know people are so annoyed by it sometimes. Like, are y'all serious? We love each other. Uh, what do you want from us? We, we're madly in love. What my do you best want? friend, I don't know what to tell y'all. It's just. Get you one. Get you, listen, get you a best friend like Yasmin. It's, it's just, your life will be so much better when you have somebody that got your back. And then you can talk without judgment. You know, they've gone through similar things. They can pick holes in you. Like, wait a minute, girl. Hold up. Buzz. You sound right. They hold, hold you accountable, which... <laughs> that one, I think her favorite word is accountability. I just feel like life is hard enough as it is. Why make it harder by doing dumb stuff that you know is dumb? She's very serious. Like, it's yes, hard. like, life yes, is hard let's, as let's it go. Is. Let, mm. Life is hard as it is. Why are we doing dumb stuff? Why? Sammy, like, why would we do that? Why would we do I forgot what it was. It was not too long ago. You was like, because when this happened, this happened, I was like, so, so you did something wrong and it was your fault? Right. It's like, What's no, what do you mean? No, no, no. But you decided that you were going to do this thing, and there are consequences to the thing that you decided to do, and now you're upset about it. I just don't know what, why we're wasting our time with this. Right. So that's why you got to have good friends. And I think sometimes people just don't have good friends. They don't see good friendships. They don't see people who've been friends for years and years. And, you know, everyone does the, oh, my grandparents were married for blah, 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 and things like that. But friendships, I don't think a lot of that content, storyline gets put out there. Right. Right. So how do you think we've been doing in, in these corona times? So like we mentioned... Our little three-day thing, you know, our, our three-day uh, bylaw requirement has been stretched. Actually, I think it was stretched before that. Yeah. Like, in the year, like, it was kind of funky, and it was like... Because we decided we wanted okay, to be adults. Okay, going on four or five days. We're going on four or five days here. Like, I yes. mean, what's happening? Because we're um, joining professional organizations. We want to be on committees. And it's like, yeah. girl, what time is it? We got to do... Yeah. I got to write a report, girl. Take me back. Yeah. Um, we adapt. We adapt again, again. And I'll keep, I'll keep repeating it. We're soulmates. Okay. What God has for us is for us. What God has for us is each other. So therefore, <laughs> okay. Cheers. No, but um, we we adapt. And I mean, me and Sandra made a pact a long time ago that this was one of us has to die first. Like <laughs> literally, we made this pact a long time ago. So I mean, but Sandra is my best friend. She's the godmother of my children. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. We just are. And other people, I'm sorry. If you're watching this, I'm sorry. But yeah, and I mean, and I think I think we understand each other. We understand that we're busy. We understand that, you know, other things happen. I mean, I don't, I never feel like, oh, look at Sandra out there gallivanting and choosing other people over me. Like, you know, and I mean, like, I'm like, like, I might joke with her, like, oh, so you out here, but the new friend. But like, I don't know, I, like, I, we're just solid. Our friendship is solid. I feel like we understand each other. I feel like if ever there was a time I called Sandra, I needed her, she would be there and, and vice versa. So I mean, you know. Quick, so fast, I'm, and in a hurry. Right, so I'm not tripping if a day, like I, I realize that if more than three days goes by, it's probably because something happened. Yep. Probably because, you know, we need the time. So I'm not tripping on that, right? We, we're solid. So as Yasmin mentioned, we are pretty solid, and I have to say that is something that I love about our friendship. We've had, you know, our fair share ups, downs, ins and outs, 
um, we didn't go to the same college, even though I like I had that idea, like that fairy tale. Like people have that. Are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure I was there every weekend doing my laundry. Are you sure we did? Right. <laughs> you see, like it's like you know. I guess I was one of those people that didn't have like those relationship fairy tales, but I had like those friendship fairy tales. Like, oh, we're gonna go away to college together. It's gonna be just like the Huxtables. We're gonna go to the HBCU, and then we're gonna join a sorority together, and then we're gonna grow up. We're gonna live in the same neighborhood and raise our kids together. And it was like, no. <laughs> so it didn't happen. That was, that was my friendship goal. I want a best friend that I've had since kindergarten, and we'll what? live on. We'll live our whole life together. Right, just together forever. We know everything about each other. We're going to live next to each other. We're going to have a wraparound porch. Our kids are going to be friends. It's going to be a whole legacy. Didn't yeah. work out exactly like that. But I feel as though we're at least building that going yeah. forward. And it's something that in my other friendships that I look for, like, okay, is this something that's going to last? Is this a friendship that is pouring into me? I'm pouring into it. And then when it comes to, like, my romantic relationships, it's kind of like, well, I already got one soulmate. <laughs> Can you live up to these expectations mm -mm. Mm -mm. that I have? Right? <laughs> nope. Because and I think, like, you know how people try to say, oh, girls with, that grow up with their dads, they don't have daddy issues if you didn't grow up with your dad. I feel like though sometimes if you have, like, bad friendships, it mirrors into your romantic relationships and you you... You just try to compensate because that's your only friend. That's the only person you got. You be holding on. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I need him. Um, and so as we move into some other topics, um, everyone watch Insecure. And if yeah. you have it, spoiler alert. Stop, pause, go watch it if you got to. But Molly and Issa, do you think we have a Molly and Issa friendship? No. Thank God. Yeah, no. No, we support each other. I, and I mean, like, I could say to you, Sandra, I want to start my own ice cream truck. It's going to be a black-owned ice cream truck. All the ice cream is going to have black names. What's that? That's what I want to See? <laughs> Dope. So have you figured out a route? Um, did you get a, did you get, um, the, the, like, what kind the of name? License chair? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, girl, you might know somebody who do logos. <laughs> That's what you're going to say to me. What else I'm going to say? You my friend. Like good it's job. never gonna be oh, so it's gonna be the thirty-five thousand thing that you did that you started and you didn't finish. Oh, okay. It's never like that. We're very supportive. And I I think watching Insecure this season and just seeing how Molly and Issa were interacting, I can see how their lack of communication and their putting stuff off and not talking about it just festers. Just yes. like we don't have that issue. Well, I can be a little passive aggressive. I'm not going to lie. You can be, but again, so I'm the kind of person where I observe a lot. So like I'm, I like I know people. Like I, if I'm around you long enough, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're thinking. You don't really have to say much for me to kind of be kind of in tune with you. But you, on the other hand, you and I are the same person. So I know when you're being passive aggressive. Like I don't know if I send you a text message. I'm like, oh, she mad. Let me go on ahead. Right. And vice versa. And I mean, like, and like, we've had times I have to be like, yeah, I'm pissed about this. How do I? Right. How do I, do I say it in a not so crazy way? Right. And but I, I mean, think, I think, I think therapy helps for both of us in kind of communicating those listen, things. Listen, cheers to therapy. Especially as we're getting older and just in different types of relationships the roles can sometimes change. And that's what I was seeing with Issa and Molly. Like, Issa maybe, you know, a little laxad not lackadaisical, but she's like a more free-spirited type of life. So now she's finally found something. So maybe some of her negative traits, she's trying to let them go, but Molly won't let her grow up. Right. Same thing for Molly. She's trying to make a relationship work, and Issa's like, girl, you do this all the time. So it's like their lack of communication. They're literally doing the same thing to each other, yeah. Yeah, they're doing the same thing to each other in various degrees. And for me, at the end of the season, I felt some type of way that Molly, now that it looks like her and her man broke up, you want Issa back. No. I'm not there yet. I'm not that grown that now that <laughs> you got no man, you want to yeah. be my friend again? Yeah, I don't know. I'm on the, I'm on the fence about that. Because I mean, like, 
I always like ever since like Grey's Anatomy, I always talk about everybody has a person, they have their their person, right? And so I'm on the fence about the whole about her and about her, I guess coming back to Issa because I feel like she tried to replace Issa with him. Yes. And then when she realized, like like it's like it's like it's like it's like if you were dating this guy, he was nice and everything, he had a nice car or whatever, but he wasn't a thug. So you leave him, you go thug, and you realize, yeah, no, I should stay where I was at. That's what it feels like to me. So I'm like, I'm kind of on the fence because is it wrong? Yes. But at the same time, like, I get it. You I needed it. that experience to realize right. that Issa is your person. Issa right. is one of the few people who will take your shit. Even right. Molly's own family when she was right. mad at her dad. She is your person. That's She's exactly. your person. Issa don't care. Issa came over there. And was at the game night, making efforts. They went to the lunch date or breakfast, whatever she paid, because Issa realized that that's something that Molly doesn't really like to have to do. But Molly could have been expressed that, like, listen, girl, this is the fifth time this month I've had to pay for something. Simple conversation. That's what, that was my problem with Molly, that you had, she had no problem talking to Andrew, but she had a problem talking to Molly, and I'm like, and then I'm like, if Molly was my friend, I'd be like, girl, you spend all this money on therapy every week, and you got to do it. And you can't buy me no avocados. Something. Like, you know, like, let's have a talk about it. And I think that lack of communication, like, maybe not seeing good friendships, because even the relationship that they have with the other two friends is kind of a little, you know, they use yep. each other in certain ways. So it's kind of like, <sighs> yep. No, it got to be a cohesive group. Like, your friendships need to be mutually beneficial. Right. And if you're having a problem, you got to talk about it. Like, I don't really like that whole, well, I not talk about it. If you're not going to talk about it, it, it needs to be because you need to calm down and get your thoughts together. But you need to talk about it. If we're going to be fake about it, then keep that same energy. Yeah, because then we can just be fake about the whole thing. But we need to... If we really friends, if we're really trying to be ride or dies and keep this thing together, we gotta tell each other the truth and do what we need to do. Right. So yep. um hopefully you ladies and gents out there, uh, if you're having some trouble with your friends, if you got a friendship that's a little wonky, um talk to that person if, if it's someone that you wanna keep around or yep. if you just wanna give it a break. Um I think like when like there are friendships that do need to end. It's Yes. Trying your best to end them amicably. I mean, if they don't, sometimes years later, you'll see that person and you're able to have that conversation with them about, hey, we're not friends anymore, but there's no hard feelings. We can do whatever. And sometimes there'll never be that closure. Yeah. And you so know, we love closure, but sometimes closure is a myth. We do. But I, yeah, I mean, that's something you learn um, as you get older is that you're not always promised closure in any relationship. You don't always get that final, that 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 season finale of right. like, like you don't normally like you don't always get that, and so you have to be okay with things just ending, just because. Right, exactly, and that's the, I think that's the thing. You have to be okay with it just ending and doing what you need to do. And yeah. I mean, if you're not okay with it, might I suggest therapy? We're advocates for therapy. Therapy for black girls, search a hashtag. Listen, July is Minority Mental Health Month. Listen, go find you a therapist, a talk space, search a hashtag on Instagram or Facebook, join a Facebook group, get a meditation app. Don't let these things fester in your mind about what if, and I can't believe, and I can't imagine. Look. Absolutely not worth it because it'll translate into other areas of your life that you might overcompensate for or you don't realize that sometimes it's you mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. it's you about us is that i know i know my best friend is a leo if we get somewhere she's gonna need to get these pictures off she's gonna need these angles like she's gonna need all the memories all of them <laughs> and because awesome. my best friend holds me accountable yeah i was like okay see you're gonna get five pictures okay you get you get you get two poses. <laughs> two poses. I'll give five you, pictures. I'll give you now you you could spread them out throughout the evening. You can get them all <laughs> in one lump sum. And I'm like, five bitches, that's it. Five. 
But that's me knowing my best friend and setting my boundaries. I am not your photographer. I ain't finna be out here all night laying on the street taking these photos of you. But I know you like photos, so I will do that for you. That's, you know, that's me supporting you and also, like... Setting your boundaries. That's the best thing I learned in therapy is setting your boundaries. My favorite Ooh. word, reiterated all the time. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. And listen, one of the things that I think, of course, for women, we're speaking directly to the ladies now, black women, African-American, black, whichever you prefer, but we'll say black because, you know, is that I don't really like women who say they don't have female friends. I don't really like the word female anyway because female is cold for bitch. But, hey, is that women who don't have other women friends, other female friends, and they kind of use it as a badge of honor. Like, I'm different. I don't have other women friends. Yeah. And they use it kind of like as a pick-me type of, you know, character trait that they're better because they don't have female friends because females gossip or whatever. But I think it's important to have good female women friends yeah. because there's certain things you can talk about that women understand. And it's also when women are like, I only have male friends. And it's like, huh. Okay. But you need to have both. And I think you really do need a really good core group of women friends, of female friends, because there's some things you talk to. Like one of my friends, we were talking, you know, relationship things or whatever, and just talking with her and talking through some of her stuff is like, I don't want to be stereotypical, but women, we a little, we think differently, you know? And so helping her talk and think through what she was going through, it was like, I see what you're doing. Let me help you piece it together. Like you're trying to create this scenario that doesn't really exist, but it will exist if you keep pushing it that way. And women do that. We create scenarios in our head of the worst outcome or the best possible outcome, even though logically it doesn't make sense. What are your thoughts on women who don't want to have other women friends or who use having male friends only as a badge of honor? Um, so again, I don't, I don't get that. I feel like women, female relationships are necessary. You need that nurturing list to come up. Like, like not having female friends is like not having a relationship with your mother, with your sister. It's like, you, and you just, you just don't, it just doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. Like, I don't know any woman who does not want to have a relationship with her mother, her sister, with her cousin, whomever. Like, when you say you don't have female friends, and you're probably none of the females in your family, none of the women in your family you're close with. Like, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like, it's cool that I think, I, like, if you can have a relationship with a man and be platonic, I think that's dope. That's amazing. I don't really know too many instances of when that actually happens but if i have platonic male friends you do you're, you're a unicorn but i don't <laughs> hey cash jay and daryl how y'all doing for you <laughs> like i don't really know of many instances when that actually occurs is that so, bad that i only have three and like i know them like that's the only three like that's the only three male friends i got like is that oh i got black friends <laughs> like dang girl you only got three male friends only got three know them by name <laughs> That's You're it. You're doing great, sweetie. You're doing great, sweetie. You're doing good. You're doing good. Like I said, so if you can have male friends and platonic and that's just really somebody who supports you and, you know, got your back, that's dope. I still think you need a female. I still think you need a, another woman as a friend. And I mean, it doesn't have to even be anybody outside. It could be your family. It could be your mother, your sister, whomever. But I feel like you need that nurturing relationship that you can only get from a woman. And I yeah. think because I, I feel like women relationships, when they're bad, is that continuous situation of, how do I say this nicely? You know how, whenever a woman is like, I'm going to have, I only want to have sons. You know, it's, it's that perpetual that you don't want a daughter because you don't want to have that relationship that you and your mom used to have. And then you don't, and you don't want to kind of break the cycle because you don't want to do the work to break the generational curse. But. See, here go Yasmin, her accountability. Fair. But yes, it's the truth. Like you have Fair. to, do, 
<laughs> therapist Yasmin with her accountability. I wish I, I wish I had a sign. I wish I had a sign for therapy I can hold up every month. Like <laughs> therapy. Like like I wanted I wanted to be right here. Right. But when you when you edit this, I want to I want a therapy sign I can point to. Therapy. Okay. <laughs> I got you. But it's just it's the generational of women are difficult. Women are hard. It's too hard to have female friendship because women will hold you accountable. It, we will be like, girl, that's nuts. Girl, that don't make no sense. And so a lot of people don't like that. We just want to live in our own little world, do what we want to do, no consequences in me and my life, and it don't matter what nobody else do, I'm going to do me. There yeah. are consequences. You got to follow the law. Even if you get away with doing the bad stuff that you do, eventually it's going to come back to you. So if you can start early with having good female friendships, and granted, it may not be someone outside of your family, but your cousins, your aunt, I mean, grandma, like, that good I, nurturing. I, and like, I've heard women say that, like, I don't like to go out with females. Like, I don't like to go out partying with females. Like, you know, like, I don't like that kind of scheme. I can totally understand as a homebody, but I can get that. But to say that I have no female friends, there are, there's not a single female or woman that I can buy into, that I have heart, that I basically reveal my whole entire soul to. Like, it's just. Exactly. Like, I can under, like, some people are homebodies and things like that, but there should be at least a few women that you are able to let coming to your home, or you can go to their home, and you're able to have really good discussions with them, and yeah. that's important, and if you're not able to do that, it just makes me a little bit weary of you, and a little bit maybe a little concerned, because... I'm very, I'm very... Like I'm men just wary of women. Don't get me wrong. Like men are men are great. Men are great. All you might be, men are great. Men are awesome. But I mean, I, there's some things I don't want a man's opinion on. Right. <laughs> like that's just that's the key. Yes, some things I don't need a man's opinion on because you don't live this life. You don't live this right. body. And as a black woman, there you go. You don't know this life. I deal with racism. I deal with sexism. I deal with misogynoir. Add on to the fact, like I mentioned before, I'm a first generation. Absolutely. So the women that I'm around have to mirror that. Mm -hmm. And so if we don't start these good female relationships, these whatever, that's how we get this whole, I've seen some gender reveals, the thing turned pink and all of a sudden everybody crying. Oh no, no, not a girl. Like, come on. Don't get like, me wrong. Raising, raising a girl is hard. But I mean, it's also hard living every day as a black woman in this country, right? Right, exactly. And the same way we raise girls, we need to raise sons. Having a son isn't easier. It's just y'all do less work with the boy. And, you doing just, and then the girl got to learn. Y'all ain't, ain't doing nothing, to be honest. Y'all ain't doing nothing. Raising I mean, y'all yeah, not raising the boys. I'll tell you that. That's another topic for another day. If we don't start these good female relationships, these whatever... That's how we get this whole, I've seen some gender reveals, the thing turned pink, and all of a sudden, everybody crying. Oh, no, no, not a girl. Like, come on. Don't get like, me wrong. Raising, raising a girl is hard. But, I mean, it's also hard living every day as a black woman in this country, right? Right, exactly. And the same way we raise girls, we need to raise sons. Having a son isn't easier it's just y'all do less work with the boy. And, you doing, just, and then the girl got to be learning. Y'all ain't doing nothing, to be honest. Y'all ain't doing nothing. Raising I mean, y'all not raising the boys. I'll tell you that. That's another topic for another day. Okay. I'll, I'll talk to some dads and some sons because the raising of boys is not really raising. It's the let the wilderness take them and we'll figure it out or whatever. But um, that's how we perpetuate some of these bad Absolutely. Mother daughter relationships, these bad, if we don't start early, like having good female friends. So, even if in your immediate family, the women are not who you would like, if you have some good female friends, hey, you have a daughter, you have someone for them to um, talk to. Like, even like me and Yazzie were talking about something, it was like, oh, we have a friend that does that. Like, sex educate. Oh, we have a friend. And it's just like different things you're able to pull from, yeah. even if you don't have someone in your immediate family mm -hmm. that can do that. You have someone else that you can 
pull from to get information, to get resources. And that's why it's important to have a village, a good network of, like, life is hard enough. Yeah. You don't got no good friends. Right. Like, like you should want as many people around you, supporting you, uplifting you, and creating, like, this loving environment, this village around you as possible. Right. Brandon, like, you can't be friends with everybody. We all know that. But yep. you should want to build a village around yourself of people of like-minded individuals who are either doing better than you or, you know what I mean? They're achieving higher than you, whatever the case may be. But you should, you should want that around you. Exactly. Thank you. I don't I want us to, um, you know, we're in America, obviously. And America really pushes this rugged individualism. Pull yourself by your bootstraps. Well, what if you ain't got no boots? Like, you cannot just do everything by yourself. Like, you need no. people. I Humans are communal. And if we keep trying to, I'm, a, I'm strong, I do it by myself. Um, I don't need nobody. No one was there with me in the trenches. I could do it with myself, but why would I want to? Why would you want to? Now, you may need some lessons in discernment. You may need to do some self-actualization, like realize what you bring how you are so you can learn how to pick good people but it can't be you want to do everything by yourself therapy, <laughs> therapy. <laughs> right my therapist would be so proud of me um but it's true like you need to like life is not meant to be lived alone so I'm glad we got this is not even I like a single like me like you need friends like look at your tracy ellis ross even though she's notably single she still has a good group of friends Oprah is not married to Stedman, but her and Gail is still coochie crunch, okay? Like, we need good examples of friendship that you can continuously see. Uh, women. There's nothing like it. Like, there's really, like, really nothing like being around these women, hearing, hearing what they've been, it's just commiserating and just having a good time. Like, you can't, you cannot be that. And then, mind you, like, when we, when we get together with the girls, I do not want there to be a man inside. I don't want there to be like when we go on our cabin trip. Don't want to yes. see a man. Don't That's what I was gonna close man. with. Don't want to see a man within a hundred feet. So like, like I'm enjoying that good girl time. Like even if we just sitting here with cucumbers on our face, like it's bomb. So I don't exactly. And so as Yasmin mentioned, cabin trip, and that's what I wanted to close with is yearly. We do a cabin trip, just the girls. We find some semi-remote place, head up to the cabin. We hang out. We do some activities. We bond. We laugh. We cook. Mm -hmm. We talk. Sometimes it gets a little deep. Um, we've done vision boards. We've done that whole thing. This year, we did it. Literally right before... Rona shut everything down. Yeah. And I'm so glad we got to do it. And even though for some of us, it was a little, you know, hectic and, you know, who's coming, who's not coming, but yeah. we got a good enough group to go. And I think that's also important as well, is that you and your group of girls, if y'all can go away for a little bit, whether it's a fun girl trip, y'all just whatever, or it's something more subdued like we do with our little retreat, if you and your girls just take the time to get away together, because time, time is precious. Yeah. And so through the whole corona thing, I've been thinking about that girl strip, looking at those pictures. And even though I complain with these coordinated outfits, I'm a little difficult, guys. That's another my self-awareness. Even though I'm going to do it, I'm still going to complain just for the sake of complaining because I just want to know why we got to do it. Why? We got to do onesies, blush pink. But then I get there and they be like, I got a whole outfit. Y'all ain't we ready to see what I was about to bust out. Well, we was cute though. We was so cute. I just like, I, I'm inquisitive. Like, I just like to question everything. Um, But it's just like, yo, I'm so glad we did that because we, who knows when they're going to let us gather in someone's for an extended period of time. And so I think it's very important that there is a girl's getaway that you and your group of friends, whether it's one day 
or whatever you do to get away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life and really take the time to relax, turn up, do what you need to do, because that's another time of, I think when you have a group of friends, it sometimes helps you build better bonds with that group that you may not always do. Like, yes, me and Yaz are not best friends, but there we have our other group of friends. And those girls trips, that's oftentimes when it's like, dang, I be missing out when I don't call you. Like, you know, it kind of reminds you, like, dang, I could be a better friend. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I should continue Seriously. a better friend. Because like, yo, Philo really do know how to throw down. Like, no, Tapreen really is hilarious. Yo, Liz really is funny. And then you like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta keep on my job to be a good friend because I don't want to lose it. Right? Like, how do you feel about those girls trips? Like, did you, is that something that you thought about? First of all, first of all, listen, the movie girls trip made almost, I think $150 million. And that's for a reason. Okay. Black. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Like, you can't, like, you can't, you can't beat it with, again. You're with a good group, a good group of black women. Yes. Get your discernment together so you can choose your good group of friends. You know, you got to prune the hedges. You got to prune the flowers. You understand? Get you a good group and proceed like, on. And then on top of that, for like our girl trips, they're always like, granted, it's a good time. We, we doing whatever we doing, but it's also super empowering. Like we always leave on a high note. We always get sex education from Stephanie. But we always, like, it's always empowering. We always believe feeling better about ourselves and better about each other when we leave, like, even, even if it's just two days. So, I mean, it's not just a drunken chick that right. we, really, we really pour into each other and kind of build up on each, and kind of build each other up and so that when we come out of it, <laughs> we have to face the, the rest of the world, like, we're better equipped for it. So, I love them. I love them. I, want, I, I was going to do it once a, once a season. Um, but no, they're, yeah, hopefully they're, when the Rona's over or subdued a little bit, we can try doing it, you know, one winter, one summer or spring, because doing it in the winter time, I think it's a, it was good that we picked that because that hustle and bustle of the holiday is cold and you just need to get away. But one of the summer would definitely be as relaxing and as therapeutic as it is. And like you said, it's just, you come back like, dang. Yeah, I mean, like, we're eating, we're drinking, we're doing whatever. Like, we're still, you know, we're still doing that kind of stuff. But we always, we always do right. something empowering for each other. Be it if we, like, we had the, the, the therapy round table. We learned about wine. You know, like, we, yeah. it's always, Yasmin you know, and I did a rosé wine tasting for the girls. So, you know, if someone, listen, Yasmin and I love I a Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to talk to your best friend. <laughs> Who's your best friend? I'm the best friend, y'all. Mm-hmm. Godmother of my children. Both of them. Both. Even the boy. Even the boy. What's the problem? He loves you. He, my godson shades me. The Haitian man. That's why you need. That's why you need female friends. Right. That's Listen, that guy. Now my goddaughter loves him. That loves me. Always happy to see me. My godson, he got to look me up and down first. I don't know what he's looking for. Did I change? Am I something happen? But, um, you know, thank you for taking the time. Um, do you have anything you want to plug? You know, I do like the YouTubers and stuff. Like, is there something you want to plug? Plug your family, picture frame? Therapy. therapy. Okay, I'll, I'll put a little <laughs> therapy sign up there for you. No, um, I just think to, to wrap it up, uh, you need a good friend. You need someone who supports you, holds you accountable. Um, if you can't find a good friend, it's probably you. So get some therapy. Work on that. You know, Work on that. Um, that is a good thing. If you cannot find a good friend, it might be you. Maybe it's you. Trust me, I've done my awareness. I know my flaw. So sometimes it's me in the friendship. It's just me and this person don't mesh. But if I do want friends, there's some things in me that I need to change, adjust. Change is good, people. Mm-hmm. Some things Absolutely. about you that may need to be changed. Absolutely. So, um, you know, value, value your friendship. The same way you value your, your uh, relationship with your significant other. So, so just as important. 
So value those. Um, and yeah, I mean, just be, be a good person. I want to know. <laughs> be, a good, be a good person. Value your non-romantic relationships and therapy. And Thank you, Yasmin. This has been another episode of Sandra Says. Sandra Says.